بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وفقهنا إذا علمتنا اللهم انفعنا وارفعنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا نورا وإماما وهدى ورحمة Just few words, you know, about Hamim. I'm not familiar with those letters, you know, I'm not the best one to speak about them. But what I understand that when you have the Ha and Mim, they are part of two major words that we use them frequently and they have something to do with our religion and the nature of our religion. The first is if you add dal at the end, it's going to be Hamid, praise. We know that our Prophet, his name is Muhammad, and his name is Ahmad, and he has Al-Maqam Al-Mahmud, and he has Liwa Al-Hamid, and his nation is well described as Al-Hamadun Allah Ala Kulli Had, those who praise Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala in all states. This is the first one. The second one, you may have it derived from Rahma, Rahim, Rahima. Again, you have the same two words, but here by the beginning. Or in another word, you may say, this is your task toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala toward you. And by this combination, you are going to be as a perfect person, and this is what has been shown by this chain, you know, of knowing how to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing how the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reach you or affect you, you know. And by this, يعني, I cannot uh, go in details, you know, this is just an idea. It may be right, it may be wrong. I don't know about it. Just last point I want to mention about Hawami, or perhaps two points. The first point, always I feel in my heart that those surahs, they have some connection to the group that we call Aliflamra, okay? To be honest with you, up till now, I don't have the strong evidence, you know, to show the relation between this and the Aliflamra. I try to show some of whatever in my mind, maybe right or wrong. Those, the, the other surah, they are Yunus, Hud, Yusuf, Ra'ad, then Ibrahim, and al hijr Why did I say there's some relation? There's some way, something which we call it as code. What do I mean by code in Quran? You have, in some occasion, in the Quran, the same exact verse mentioned elsewhere, exactly. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried to, uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, find the common thing about this and that. So here you have in Surah Fussilat, the same exact verse mentioned in Surah Hud. Okay, exactly. Without even change in one or, fa or one letter, okay, which is, uh, uh, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ فَاخْتُلِفَ فِيهِ وَلَوْلَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ لَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَفِي شَكٍ مِنْهُمْ مُرِيمٌ It's the same verse exactly mentioned here and there. It may be by chance, but I have an inner feeling as if there is some relation, you know, and this I consider it as a good. Here may be well stood, understood in what way that this Alif Lam Ra speak about the non-physical, the unseen, Word, okay, and you have this chain that we spoke about. It's again in the same pattern, you know, speak about something not seen to us. You know, we have the other portion of the chain that we deal with it, you know, through our shuyukh all the way to the Prophet But we have the hidden chain, which we are not familiar with it, except by the information given to us by Allah. If I wish, I may say, I, may, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, 
uh, there's some match between Surah Ghafir and Yunus. Why? Because we said Surah Yunus is about Liqa'ullah. When you meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Surah Ghafir is speaking about some attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> if I want to match it with another point, in one hadith the Prophet sallallahu said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw himself, you know, and firstly is being shown to Jibreel and the Prophet The question will come right away, oh Allah, have you sent this person to me? You see, and here this, this has to do some, something with, when you speak about revelation and how when we have the first look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this regard. Again, this is not that clear in my mind. I feel that these two surahs has some relation with Surah Hud. And this may, may, may be explained when, well when we say that Surah Hud has the repetition of Ja'a Amruna. Bearing in mind, Amr means the Alam al Amr, the word that unseen to us. What is the major point what here that you have? In Alam al Amr is the very revelation. Yani this match with this surah that how Ja'a Amruna, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this, this message to us, you know, which is importantly for the revelation. And uh, uh, these two surahs may be related to Surah Yusuf. Why? Because here you speak, in Surah Yusuf, we speak about the physical, the seen matter from the unphysical or non-physical view. We spoke about love, we spoke about beauty, about dream, about many matters that we, we experience every night or every day and uh, which has something which not ex explainable for us, you know, in our ordinary matters. And here we speak about something physical who the prophets, the messengers, they are human, you know, and they have something hidden from us, this, their quality, their specialty, you know, in the same pattern. You know. So this. If, if he speak about general, I put a list yesterday about what may be meant, you know, by this surah. Here you have the most significant one of them, which is what? Which is the messengers of the Prophet's mercy. And then in Surah al Ra'd, we said, here you have combination of Mim and Ra, or Alam al Mulk and Alam al Malakut. And this is may be again the combination here how when we have the Quran available physically for us and this Quran you may consider it as combination between Alam al-Mulk or Alam al-Malakut or a way of getting related to each other. This may be right or wrong, you know, this was the, the last point I want to highlight about Hawanim. I said that the Prophet said, said about the last portion of the Quran, Mufassal, wa fuddiltu bil Mufassal, this was special for this nation. In one narration, wa fuddiltu bil Hawanim wal Mufassal. Okay, and here, if this narration, I'm, I'm not uh, familiar with, uh, I don't remember uh, how strong is this chain in Una, but if this strong one, that means even the Hawamim, they are special for this nation. And uh, you see the explanation we gave about Ha and Mim, how it's related to the name of our Prophet Sallallahu and the Rahma wa ma'arsalnaka illa rahmatan l'alameen, uh, and whatever in this regard. So this, by this we'll close speaking about how I mean. No questions now. If you have any question about what these points, please write them down, because as it, uh, apparently it was said that we waste some time, you know, and we should, inshallah, try to complete the whole topic, you know. So write it down. Now no time for questions. We'll move to another group. We'll move to the last three surahs of this subgroup before going to Al-Mufassal. These last three surahs, they are Surah Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Surah Al-Fatih and Surah Al-Hujur. By, by this we'll complete the number 13. We said the last group before Mufassal, it contains 13 surahs, you know. You have the Hawamin with Zumar, they are eight. And we have two surahs before complete 10, and these three will complete 13. What's about these surahs? These are Madani surahs. These are, we have Surah Al-Ahzab, 
And these surahs who are Madani in the in Mathani, in the division of Mathani, you have four surahs Madani, Surah Al-Ahzab alone in its place, and you have these three surahs at the end of uh, the group of Mathani, which are Madani. What's the significance about it? I tried in this Surah Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to find a word, you know, as you may see, in many surahs I tried to find a word repeated all the time and try to highlight it, you know, and uh, uh, consider that the meaning of this particular surah go around this meaning, okay? Here I failed to find anything, but what did I find? I found it here. A pattern, not a word. What, what do I mean by pattern? You have the words of conditions, you see. You know, in English, you have the conditional sentence, right? If you do this, I'm going to do. Whenever you do this, I'm going to, right? You have what we call conditional sentence, right? In English. In Arabic, again, we have this. And here, you have a repetition of those conditional tools, let's say. Okay, we have the tools of condition in, in Arabic, like either, like men, like ma, and other things. We are going to find many of them in this surah. This is the one hint, it's called condition, the conditional tools that has been mentioned. And the other thing I observed, what we call in Arabic jazm. What we mean by, by jazm? Those who is familiar with grammar, you know, in Arabic, jazm means when you have the verb, the present verb. The present verb usually you have dhamma on it, rafa. We call it rafa in Arabic. Yaf'alu, yadribu, ya'kulu. You see? So in certain patterns, it's going to come with jazm. What do we mean by jazm? Sukun. It's going to have sukun on it. Again, you have many of those present verbs, you know, in this surah. It come, it come in the pattern, pattern of jazm. Someone because of the conditional, because you have some of those conditional tools, will make the verb, the present verb, majzum after it, by the, uh, by the sukun, and the others by different form, either by order or command or whatever. I'm trying, uh, I'm, I'm going now, or perhaps a little bit after, to, Try to relate those information with Surah Al-Fatih, inshallah. Okay. So here, just put in, my, in mind that here, what we have common in this short surah, these four pages, you have a lot of conditional tools, and you have a lot of uh, present verb, which is which come in the form of jism, as I said. What's the meaning of it? We'll speak about it shortly. Here we should have, we should look at the strong connection between these two words. The first connection you have in Surah Sayyidina Muhammad, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Right? You read this in Surah Sayyidina Muhammad. What we have in Surah Fatih? Muhammad or Rasulullah. Right? Do you consider this as connection? Yes. It's, it's, it's a strong conne connection between them. Okay. Okay. This is one of the connections between the, these two surahs. Yeah, you have the two components, you know, of your shahada, one in this surah and the other one, the other one, فَعَلَمَ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَى اللَّهِ and the other surah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. The second connection, one of the name of surah Sayyidina Muhammad, what is the name? I know this, another name, Al-Qital. This surah is called Al-Qital. Even you, when you go to the book of Itqan, many companions, do call, they call this surah Al-Qital. Do you see any connection between Qital and Fatah? There's significant connection between Qital and Fatah, okay? The last point, okay, what is it? Any connection between Muhammad and Fatah? Yes, there's strong connection between Sayyidina Muhammad as a person and Fatih. When we want, they say, Allah iftah alayk, like they make dua to Allah iftah alayk. One of the significance of Fatih, when you have your relation with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So here you have strong connection between these two swords. So how I'm going to try to understand these two swords? I understand it, by the way. Whenever you fix these conditions and these instructions in Surah Muhammad, you are going to have the fatah from Allah. Okay? This is the best thing you get from the chain. We spoke about the chain. We spoke about the chain of Hawamim. What's the best thing to get from it? Here, you have in brief pattern, <coughs> certain instruction mentioned. I gave this lecture in UK and one of the Ladies, mashallah, she collected for us all instruction were mentioned in Surah Sayyidina Muhammad for the one who wants to work in. I'm sorry, I don't have them with me now, you know, but I remember that when I gave this lecture in UK, one of the ladies, she collected all these conditions that an instruction was mentioned. I, I mean, al Quran, this one of the way of getting fatah, okay? Uh, this one of the major barrier of not getting fatah when you disconnect or interrupt your relation with your relatives. Okay? And many other examples. I just gave you examples about it. Here we have many instructions, many conditional sentences mentioned in this surah. Whenever you feel, fulfill them, you are going to be granted by the fatah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Partially the way the Prophet ﷺ got the Fatih from Allah subhanahu Okay. So Surah Al-Fatih, uh, this is just speaking about the connection or the relation between these two surahs. Surah Al-Fatih per se, to understand it very well, you should be familiar with the special event which happened during the Prophet ﷺ time in his seerah about Sulh al hudaybiyah To be familiar with this surah, uh, you should go back and read carefully the section of Sulh al hudaybiyah Read it carefully. And Surah Al-Fatih, it was revealed according to some narration completely. And this is one of the exceptional surah that was revealed completely, not in portions. The common trend about Quran that you have five verses. Most of the Quran came five verses, five verses. As we said at the beginning, we have five verses. This is at the beginning. And most of the Quran was revealed by five verses. You have some exception. We spoke about Surah Al-An'am, the longest and the largest one, which was revealed completely in one, one set. And uh, we have some narration speak about Surah Al-Fatih. And perhaps Surah Al-Fatih, the second one in its length, you know, after Surah Al-An'am, which was revealed in a complete set, one, one set only to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was revealed on that night. I'm going to be brief about it. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted some conditions, you know, in the treaty between him and the kuffar or the infidels. And many of his comp companions, they were not pleased with that these conditions or those items, you know, which was agreed upon by the Prophet Sallallahu Some of you heard from me when I said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'm the messenger of Allah, and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is not going to waste me. And the good news came right away over the night from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Consider this as fatih. We, we know the good news, and whoever among you read the seerah is going to find it exactly how it happened. I just remind everyone that Imam Zuhri, a famous scholar, you know, in Hadith and Sirah, he said, those who make Islam over this short period of time between Sulh al hudaybiyah and Fatah Makkah, which is 22 months, they were, were much, much larger than the one became Muslims from the beginning till Sulh al hudaybiyah And in this 22 months, less than two years, you have the number of Muslims much more than from the beginning till Sulh al-Hudaybah, which is 19 years. And over less, less than two years, we have a Muslim Muslim. With how we can tell about it, during Sulh al-Hudaybah, the Prophet was with 14 or 1,500 person, whereas in Fatih Makkah, he was with 10,000 person, you know, who conquered Mecca. This briefly, uh, 
short talk. For sure, you expect Surah Fatih to speak about many of the specialties of the Prophet ﷺ. By this, you may see some resemblance between it and Surah Ahzab, because you mentioned Surah Ahzab, a lot of talk about the specialties of the Prophet ﷺ. Here you have other specialties. What's about it that the Prophet ﷺ said, tonight I I received or a revelation came to me with a surah. It's much more beloved to me than Humr al-Na'am. Humr al-Na'am, this is one of the uh, most expensive thing, you know, in that, the, the time of Arab, to have this Humr al-Na'am. This color by uh, reddish color, you know, among the camels or horses or whatever. It's considered one of the... He said, Allah well, gave us an, an example, you know, according to the Arab way of expression. He said, this is much more beloved to me than Humr al-Na'am. And the one who want to go, have good relation with the Prophet Wasallam, he should recite it once in a while, you know, because the Prophet Wasallam loved this surah and loved the recitation of this surah. What do you expect to have after that? Surah Al-Hujurat. Surah Al-Hujurat, at the beginning of it, or roughly, I think, you may consider them as five or eight, eight verse, five to eight verse, speaking about how to respect the Prophet And we know his stage, his state, his honorable position, how as believer we should act toward him. He Surah Hajarat at the first at the beginning of it speak about the etiquette, the adab we you know with the Prophet. How to behave ourselves, you know, in front of him or after this, you know, if you uh, read his hadith or we are visiting him, you know, there in Medina and Munawwara. And this has been highlighted by Sayyidina Amr al-Khattab when he will not let anyone has his voice loud in the, hara, in the, the holy mosque of the Prophet And we have this quote narrated from three, from Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, from Sayyidina Aisha and from Imam Malik. They said, حُرْمَتُهُ مَيْتًا كَحُرْمَتِهِ And he has the same right of respect, you know, after his death, sallallahu alayhi wa same way in his uh, life, sallallahu alayhi wa And that's why Sayyidina uh, Aisha, radiallahu anh, she used, whenever she hear any noise in the surrounding, to send someone to tell them, don't harm the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa And these old days, whenever anyone wants to fix his door or whatever, they will not create any noise, they'll take the whole door take it away, fix it, and do whatever of noises, and then they retain it back and fix it. Uh, and uh, the last news I received, you know, about the, uh, the Ottoman people, you know, when they rebuild the haram, uh, those of you who are familiar with the old building of the haram, when it was in the red, co red color, it's still there, you know, but they changed the paint to to the white color, but it used to be in the red. This is the last building done by the Ottomanian, by the Sultan Abdel Majid. I heard from one sheikh saying that uh, those Ottomanian not to create any noise, you know, in the surrounding. They brought cotton, you know, and they uh, had spread it in the whole mosque to the depth of one meter. This not to let any stone or anything thing would come down to create any noise there. You know. This is the way, by this way, they rebuilt the Haram and Nabawi Sharif. Uh, this happened, I think, 200 years ago or so, perhaps a little bit. No, not 200, 150, 150 years ago, they, when they rebuilt the Haram and Nabawi Sharif. So here, again, the first section of Surah Hujurat speak about the rights of the Prophet Sallallahu and our self. Namely, how to respect him, how to show our love to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's about the rest of it? Speak about what? Anyone? Hmm? Social issue. Social issue, yes. Social relation. The rest of it speak about the etiquette, the adab among ourselves. 
Firstly, about the Prophet ﷺ, then about ourselves, among ourselves. This, for me, is very, very important point. We should all go back and try to learn much more and try to adjust our behavior because we have significant lack of uh, behaving toward each other, you know, and treating each other, and we should correct it in, by this way. But the question that I want to ask, what's the relation between this and that? What's the relation between uh, respect to the Prophet and respect to the other? What's the relation? When we respect to other, we respect the other. By the way, he is not the other, the Muslims, it's saying. No, the Muslims, here the relation between the Muslims, not the others. No, no, I mean, you know, between the Muslims and the we respect the Muslims for other ones. Let me put it in this way. When you love the Prophet, when you know the value of the Prophet ﷺ, you look at these people as what? The followers of the Prophet ﷺ. Those, the Prophet ﷺ care about them a lot. And by this, you are going to feel your responsibility toward the others, okay? And this is to those of you who heard me you know, speaking about Imam Shafi'i, how he said that I'm going to forgive anyone who commit any sin or steal any of my money I'm going to forgive all of them. Why? Because I don't like to be show, uh, seen uh, blocking a muwahid, the one who declare oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of entering heaven, or not to make the Prophet وسلم, feel bad about one of his nation. This is what the reason given by, you see, uh, really I look at this reason given by Imam Shafi as very noble and very highly uh, sensitive, you know, uh, reason given by him. So here, I, by this I may understand why in Surah Al-Hujurat we have the combination between the respect of the Prophet and the respect of Muslims, because when you respect the Muslims, you are, this is part of your respect to the Prophet because these are the followers of the Prophet Whenever you know the value of saying, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, when you the, you, when you the, the value, value of it, you are going to know very well the value of everyone, uh, anyone saying, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. And by this, we are going to respect it. By this, we finish the third portion by the division of the Prophet ﷺ when he said that this portion is the portion of Al-Mazam. We are left by the last portion. The last portion is Al-Mufassal. Mufassal is very unique when the Mufassal, most of it, of the Mufassal, they are Meccan surah. In, in, all, in most of these surahs you are going to find the repetition, the same speak about the issue of the Meccan Surah. Speaking about Allah, attributes and names, speaking about messengers, speaking about books, speaking about angels, speaking about the hereafter. But it's each Surah in different pattern. In a way that you may have a state, or some of us, you know, may be in this position, and how they should look at those matters. For example, some of these, these surahs speak about how to, to look at them, you know, whenever you are at home. Some, when you, whenever you are outside home. Some, when you are in the hereafter. Some, when you are about to die. Some, when you are uh, in this, this certain place. You know. so, so all of them, they speak about almost the, the same repeated issues, you know, from different aspects. This is the first point about the Mufassal. The second point about, about Mufassal, Many of these surahs, they are a summary of a longer surahs. Perhaps I'm not that clever, you know, to show all of them, you know, but I may give you some ex examples uh, how I look at some of these surahs as a summary of longer surahs, you know. And the code that I spoke about, and you have the same verse mentioned, you know, repeated in certain surahs, you know, here, and a longer surah, this means as if this surah is a summary of previous surah came before. 
Okay. So, to be honest with you, the most difficult area in my talk when I start speaking about Abu Fasal, I feel too scared, you know, because here I don't feel myself that confident, you know, about what I'm speaking about. These are summarized surahs, short surahs, but they contain a lot of matters, you know, that I feel myself, you know, afraid that I may miss the whole point behind them or the meaning or whatever. I try to simplify it, to make it uh, sounds good, you know, but you may help me, you know, but unfortunately, not now, they said when we finish that. <laughs> So, we start with Surah Qaf. Let's try some of them, you know. And here, I may speak about some of them as groups, you know. We have some groups, you know. But in general speaking, the common trend here, you have each Torah by its own, covering certain subjects. Okay. So, you have Surah Qaf, you have Surah Zariyat, you have Surah al -Tur. النجم القمر الرحمن الواقع. Let's start سورة باي سورة and see what speaking about and what the relation if there's any relation between one and another. سورة قاف. In Muslim, it's narrated by a, a companion, woman companion called Um Haritha. That I did not memorize Surah Qaf except from the Prophet وسلم, because he used, used to recite it on the pulpit during Khutbat al Jumu'ah every Friday. She memorized Surah Qaf because, let's say, if it's not every Friday, يعني, repeatedly the Prophet وسلم, is going to speak about Surah Qaf. And she memorized it from him. So what do you expect to have Surah Qaf is? <coughs> we spoke about the seven sections, you know, of subjects that in the Quran. So under what, what subject is going to be? Iza or Maw'iza or admonition in English. Okay, this is the common meaning of it. This is the Maw'iza. That's why... That's why even the Prophet وسلم, when he has large gathering, he's going to recite Surah Qaf completely. During Eid prayer, as narrated in, uh, that he recited Surah Qaf completely in one rak'ah. During Eid, why? Because he has large gathering. You know, this is the gathering, not only of males, males and females, even the ministering women, because the Prophet وسلم, did not used to uh, pray it in the mosque. They used to pray it outside the mosque. Even he encouraged the uh, excused women, you know, to come and attend the uh, Eid prayer, to listen and hear, and he use, you see, by the pattern, the way of the recitation of the Prophet وسلم, to recite Surah Qaf completely in the Eid prayer. And we have from that particular hadith in Muslim during the khutbah al Jumu'ah. That's been, this is one of the best way of admonition. How to make mawa'iza, how to make mawa'iza for yourself and for the other, how to breach people, people. And uh, you are not going to find something extra you know, in this surah. This surah is similar to all Makkia surah, speaking about same issues that we have, uh, we have in the Makkia surah, but in a pattern to make, to soften the heart to make it accepting you know this. That's why this is termed in the, this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَ This is admonition or something for remembrance. To who? لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ Who is going to get benefit of Surah Qaf? One of two persons. The one who has heart. All of us, we have hearts? No. Some of us, we have heart. The other, they don't have heart, okay? We, we spoke to those who uh, did not uh, attend Ayyuhal Wala. We spoke about the four types of hearts that the Prophet Sallallahu told us about. Yeah. The one who has Al-Qalb Al-Ajrad, 
that's nothing there in this heart. And there's a candle in it as if it's in light the whole heart. This is what's called the heart of the believer or the heart of the mu'min. And this is the one who will get benefit of this admonition or preaching. Who, who else will may get it? The one who doesn't have heart when he will listen to the one who has heart. Okay? Yeah, you, uh, firstly, you recognize yourself. Do you have heart or not? If you ha have heart, you are going to be influenced and affected by this soul. If you don't have, have heart, don't sit down and look, no. You should search for a person who has heart, you know, and listen to him. Listen carefully to his words. These are the two types of people that will get benefit of Surat Qam. How to help ourselves, you know, to get benefit of it? Do you have instruction in this surah? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fasbir uh, ala ma yaqulun. This is the first item. Fasbir ala ma yaqulun. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted the honorable times that we should have either tasbih or prayer or making something to drive us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ before sunset and before before sunrise and before sunset. ومن الليل فسبح نايت وأدبار السجود. They interpreted it as the the prayer after Maghrib prayer. Okay. What are firstly be patient. Okay. To get the 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 benefit you know of this surah. Then make the speech. Some interpreter they may say that tasbih here means to pray or make zikr or make tasbih or other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted the honorable times, you know, to expose it. Before sunrise, before sunset. Night prayer and after Maghrib time. These are the major uh, honorable times, you know, to improve yourself, you know, by making liquor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by this, you are going to soften your heart. Either you are going to have a heart and have full acceptance of the whole surah, or if you fail, just find a person with a heart and try to listen to him carefully. <coughs> Move to Surah al -Dariyat. If anyone has any question, please write it down. Surah Al-Zariyat, we spoke this morning, I think, about how this is the feminine uh, ruler pattern in Arabic language. It's used in these surahs about certain groups of angels who have different tasks. Here, when you have with the Riyati Zarwa, Fal Hamilati Wukra, Fal Jariyati Yusra, Fal Muqassimati Amra. Highlighting something, I'm, I'm going to speak about it shortly. This is the surah of what? Surah of provision, surah al rizq al rizq we call it in Arabic provision, uh, in English provision. And they speak about it. That's why Allah swear in this surah that this is a truth, you know, that وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ مَمَا تُوَعَدُونَ فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ Swear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, swear by the Lord of the heaven and earth, this is right or truthful, the way you speak. What's the connection between Rizq and those groups of the angels? You are going to find these four groups of angels. Each one, each group is, has some responsibility to bring the Rizq to you. Yani for sure, we work hard we try to orient ourselves, you know, about uh, certain matters, you know, to gain money, but this is the physical way of gaining money. You should be familiar with the unphysical way of gaining money, you know, and have, you, you be familiar, you know, with those group of the angels, you know, and in your heart, you should be too confident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put your provision in the heaven and the earth. Nothing is going to come to you except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to come to you. I should highlight here uh, 
about the guest of Sayyidina Ibrahim. They are mentioned in this surah. And it's this brief story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted how to treat your guests. Because the guest is going to have his own rizq. Firstly, they were described as what? Mukranin. I said, Ibrahim, he is the one to take good care of his guests. Mukranin, okay. Then he described, Faragha ila ahli. When we want to bring food, you know, you should go by a sort of gentle or hidden way. Don't shout, where is the food? You know, or try to shout, you know, to, to bring. No. Sayyidina Ibrahim, he went in a gentle way, not letting, don't let the other, you know, be aware of what you are doing. You go, raga ila ahli. Okay. Then he chose Ijlin Sameen. And he will choose the best which is available in your house. You see, this is one of Adab al Diyafa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't ask any of us to buy something from the market. No. Whatever is available, bring the best thing available to you. Unfortunately, nowadays, because we don't practice this, that's why we don't invite each other frequently. Why? Because every time we invite someone, you know, are going to pay a lot of money, we'll go to the market many times, we'll bring many items, and you name it. That's why, because of this uh, hardship, you know, we cut down, you know, in our invitation. Is invitation is good? Yes, it's good because there is some hidden secret, you know, whenever you serve food, to have, to love each other and have strong connection with each other. How? Don't ask me, I don't know exactly how. But I know that the Prophet last instructed us, don't invite your uh, food except a righteous person. Because you are going to have unique relation. And the Prophet last wants you to have this unique relation with the one who is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? Uh, the question, if you want. Questions? Okay. Let me just finish this point. Okay, so he spoke, uh, he chose the best of his available food. Okay, and then you don't take them, go to the dining room. The, the best way, you introduce the food to them. You put them available here, wherever they are sitting, you put them, put the, the food there. And the last point, you try to invite them, please come and get your, your portion of your nasib of this. Allah ta'kulun, the Prophet Ibrahim said Ala. You see, it's very nice way, you know, in few words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all adab or etiquette of hosting the guest. Okay? At the end of this surah, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقًا وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالْرَزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ النَّفِي You are not here to gain your provision. The provision is from Allah. We are in this life to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, now we leave for a few minutes for question. If anyone has any question, let's answer. Yes? Uh, can, so it says in the hadith that uh, risk is uh, determined in the womb. Can it be? Can it determined be in? When, 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 one, when one is in the womb. Okay. okay. Can risk increase? Again, if we speak about the level of the tablet, it will change. If we speak about awlu'ah al-mahu al-isbat, it may be changeable. And I have an yubsat alaw fi rizqih. To get more rizq, according to the level of awlu'ah al-mahu al-isbat. But according to the tablet, nothing is going to be changed. Yes? Afran Sheikh, you said the surat al-dariyat, surat al-rizq. Yes. No, Surat Al-Waqi'a, Surat Al-Ghina, not Surat Al-Rizq. There's a difference between Rizq and Ghina. We'll come to Surat Al-Waqi'a and we'll explain it. No, Surat Al-Waqi'a is not Surat Al-Rizq. Surat Al-Ghina, to be sufficient, okay? You may have very poor person, you know, and he's sufficient. And this is Ghani. This is very rich one. And you may have one with millions, you know, but he is not sufficient, he, he feels deficient all the time, you know, and this is not, not rich. Question? Uh, 
The pronoun to start with, it's who. To make it easy, whenever you have ya before it or kasra, they will say he, alayhi he, be he. But there is a language or an accent, an Arabic accent to say who. Why it's chosen in this particular place, not elsewhere, not in other place. They said, firstly, alayhu Allah, because when you say alayhi Allah, you are going to thin the, the holy name of Allah. It should be, it should be majestic, alayhu Allah. This is for the pronunciation, for the meaning, as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us of the original ahad. All of us, we have original ahad with Allah. So here, when you go back to who, which is the original of the pronoun, and this, as if this reminder, go to the original ahad that you have. So you have meaning and you have pronunciation, reason for it. Yes. Sidi, Hizb al Nasr, they say Hamim seven times. What is the significance of Hamim over Alif Lam? Why Hamim? Since this is special for this nation, for sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives more support to this nation, okay? As if you try to descend, you know, this mercy or support or help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this. And if I want to be more clear, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ghazwa, he made shi'ab or the secret word among his people, what is hamim la yunsarun. And he connected it to the victory, you know. And by this, for sure, victory means enough, uh, support given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe this, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yes? If in some places in the Quran, uh, none of them come to mind, it looks like the verse um, goes against like Aqa'idah uh, al-Nahu. How are those verses understood in general? When on the outside they look like? They go against the, the normal rule. Yes, you have few areas in the Quran. I don't say it goes against the Qaida, against the famous or the most familiar Qaida of Nahu. But it, it is according to other Qaida of Nahu. And this is, should pay our attention. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the pattern here? There is something here, some secret, something hidden here. So, uh, uh, we have Wal Muqimin as Salah, we have Was Sabi'un, you name it, you know. And, uh, I cannot go by it now, you know, but if we have time, I'll try to highlight some of it, this for you, you know, if we have time. Yes? Uh, you talked about Surah Qaf, I'm oh, sorry. Surah Qaf, uh, the admonitions, that discuss admonitions, and you said that uh, by reciting that Surah, it softened your heart. And you mentioned about finding somebody who has a heart. Um, what do you exactly mean by that, and how do we find that person? This is a very tough question for me. I don't know. I'm looking for someone who knows all this. <laughs> but to be honest with you, all of us, we feel that so and so, or this person has stronger connection with Allah than us. We feel it all the time, right? Such people, you know, when you have such a person, and they Let's go by the definition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, those who, well, whenever you see them, who are going to remember Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, you will look for such a person to find. Question? Someone told me that. Louder, please. Someone told me that when you say, Hamim, Salam, 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 so what's the question? Shall I read it or not? Try to read it whenever you don't have exam. Okay. No, not necessary. No, I did not say not necessary. Read it whenever you don't have exam to be sincere to Allah. Okay, because 
I think Surah Fatiha is much more important than your exam. <laughs> yes. Are, are the Mashayikh and, and Awliya, are they picked by Allah or can ordinary people through struggles become one of these uh, an Awali? You need the two components. And we know for sure in our Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, okay, that's a question, are those awliya or the chosen people you know from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is merely a choice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you cannot do anything or we can work hard, you know, and be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think we should have the two components. As a reminder, we recite, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nista'. Okay, and by these two, uh, we read in Ayyuhal Walad as Suluk, this is from your side, and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's side, Hatta Uhibbahu. Okay, this is you cannot make it, you know, from your side. You work hard to you reach the point of <coughs> Mahabba from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you reach this point, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matter to grant you with whatever. Whereas prophethood according to people of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, this will not be gained by anyone. Even if so, the one spent all of his life, you know, working hard, he cannot become a prophet. This is special from Allah. Yes? Uh, this is only, yeah, it might not be related, but uh, here, yeah, we hear, it, it occurred to me, you know, we hear a lot, Istafti uh, Qalbak, ask yourself, and you refer to your heart, or I don't know any the exact definition, but, they refer to it a lot, and yeah, and when they're trying to make calls by themselves on fiqh or aqidah, and they make decisions on issue that they have in aqidah and fiqh here in the mm -hmm. states, they do it a lot. So what's I the, love this question a lot, you know, because this is completely is related to the topic. Because here, I confirm this completely. The one who has a heart, let him make a stifta of his qalb. Okay, the one who doesn't have heart. Cannot make it, okay? And here, let's take it in the simple way. If you have, the Prophet Sallallahu described to us a worshiper of silver coin or golden coin. If this one makes istifta of his qalb, what's the result is going to be? Interest halal, all haram is halal because I'm going to gain more money. So this heart is aimed, you know, it's target, you know, just to get money. The other one to get fame, the third one to uh, be politician, the fourth, you know, you name it, you know. These hearts, are they ready to be asked or consulted? No way. If you have the real qalb that the Prophet Sallallahu described, whenever you have it, yes, I go 100% by it, that's, this person is eligible to make a stifta of his, uh, his skull. The one who doesn't have it, he shouldn't do it. Yes. But there's the hadith that's like, um, that if you make it that and you're correct, you get two hasanas and make it that and you, you're not correct, you get one hasana. Doesn't that apply? This hadith is about al-hakim. Or what the uh, scholars they call as mujtahid. Okay. Again, if I have the quality or the eligibility of being as such, yes, I'm rewarded even if I'm wrong. If I'm not eligible, no. From where did I take it? When the Prophet ﷺ gave us the three, or according to some narration, four patterns of judge. One of them is going to be in the people of heaven, the one who has the eligibility and go by that, the, the right decision. And the other three or the other two, they are not. And the one who don't know how to judge, you know, or uh, on what basis he should go, this is according to this hadith, he's in the hell, hellfire. So again, yes, this is correct. Whenever you are eligible, because as a human, even though you are eligible, you may be mistaken. Okay, other question? We'll stop here, inshallah.